welcome back. We are now back to kick off our first session um, after our panel. Wasn't that a fun, fun panel, huh, Daniel? <laughs> yeah, I, I loved it. it. I know, I loved it. I feel like we could just keep going. And I was like, oh, we have to uh, take a break. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I guess reflection is important, too. <laughs> but uh, we're so excited to have Daniel here, who's going to be sharing about really uh, micro learning trends, all the insights and the evolution because Daniel really has been one of the pioneers, NTC first, when micro learning, I remember when we started, people said, micro learning, what is that? Yep. Are people gonna learn from their phones? And I think people were very skeptical that people would learn on their phones. But of course now, how many years later, micro, everyone knows about micro learning, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm gonna turn over to Daniel. I don't wanna steal his thunder. He has so much great stories and please challenge him with your questions. And we are now in session three of Nobi. So Daniel, you can share your screen. Yeah. And okay, uh, I'll, I'll turn to you to share, but uh, off to you, Daniel. Okay, thanks, uh, Soyang. Okay, so let me just share my screen. Okay, everybody can see my screen? We're good? Yep, yep. Uh, okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, so uh, in today's session, I will uh, share very briefly on three uh, areas. The first is our learnings from our implementation of Nobi. Uh, secondly, I'm going to share a little bit about some of the technologies uh, we have implemented at NFC or NTUC First Campus to improve the learning experience for our staff. And last but not least, uh, just to share with everybody a little bit about how we hope to add value to our stakeholders. Okay, so uh, moving on. Uh, yeah, just a quick introduction. Uh, I'm Daniel and I'm part of the team at NTUC First Campus, which uh, delivers learning to about 5,000 staff members uh, in Singapore. Okay, uh, I started life as a naval architect and uh, serendipity brought me to the airline, the hospitality, and now the early childhood industries. So over the years, I've had the opportunity to work in various roles from uh, customer service, human resource, product development, operations, and more recently, uh, learning. Uh, I've always been fascinated by the way technology has changed or evolved our lives, the way we work, the way we play. And um, uh, I'm, I'm really quite excited about what uh, I have to share with everybody this morning. So uh, in, in the current context, of course, uh, I believe that Gen AI is the next big thing uh, after the advent of the PC and the internet. Okay, so on a lighter note, uh, okay, I I have a gold, uh, one-year-old golden doodle. Her name is Coco. Uh, Coco is a wonderful companion. Uh, she uh, is adorable. Uh, she's uh, extremely curious. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with golden doodles, you realize that they have absolutely no concept of personal space. Okay, uh, they... They are in your face all the time and uh, follow, follow you around like a shadow. So apart from spending time with Coco, uh, I also dabble in a little bit of uh, photography and cycling. So uh, in case uh, anybody out there, if you've got uh, pets you'd like to share uh, a photo, uh, feel free to upload this uh, on this page and uh, I'm happy to connect. Okay, first, uh, let me share a little bit of background to NTUC First Campus or NFC for short. Okay, so essentially we are a social enterprise and we operate uh, two preschool brands with a couple of adjacent businesses and a charity. So our preschool brands are My First School and Little Schoolhouse and combined uh, we run about 180 preschools in Singapore uh, and uh, with a total enrollment of more than 25,000 children. Okay, we have a business unit called Seed which uh, offers uh, enrichment programs to, for young children. And our outdoor school provides learning outside of the classroom through adventurous uh, learning journeys. Okay, last but not least, uh, we have uh, the Bright Horizons Fund. Uh, this is stem, or rather this stems from our belief that uh, education is a social leveler and that no child should be deprived of a quality preschool education because their families are not able to afford the fees. Okay, uh, I mentioned this earlier. So if uh, you could follow me on the uh, Nobi app, uh, do you remember what is NFC staff strength?
Okay, if you remember what I said, just pick the number. Otherwise, uh, just pick a number you fancy. Okay, thank you. Okay, most of you got it right. Okay, uh, we have uh, 5,000 uh, staff members uh, who work at over 180 different locations uh, in Singapore. So prior to 2019, okay, uh, we had a e-learning system which was deskbound. So this did not quite meet our needs because 90% uh, of our staff members are educators who spend the day in the classroom uh, with our children. So after hearing uh, from our uh, staff members in terms of what uh, they wanted in a learning, uh, from a learning perspective, and also taking into consideration our strategic priorities at that point in time, uh, it was quite clear that we needed to go out there to look for a mobile first uh, platform, which would enable our staff uh, to take charge of their learning. So we evaluated uh, various uh, solutions out there and the Nobi program uh, or platform, the Nobi platform stood out for us uh, because of its mobile first uh, micro learning uh, approach. Okay, so of course, at that point in time, uh, the first question we asked was, so what is micro learning? Okay, and uh, after we found out a little bit more about micro learning, uh, we were even more convinced that uh, that is really what we needed. So after a successful uh, pilot, uh, we launched uh, Nobi in 20, uh, July 2019. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, what were we looking for in this uh, platform, right? Uh, before we uh, uh, landed on Nobi, essentially there were four things we were looking for. Okay, the first was around uh, efficiency of learning. So there are two aspects to this uh, efficiency uh, of learning. One aspect is how easy is it for our staff to pick up new knowledge? Now, the other aspect of efficiency is how quickly can our curators create new and engaging programs on the platform? So on both counts, uh, the Nobi uh, platform uh, stood out for us on this, uh, in this area. Okay, moving along uh, in terms of knowledge uh, retention, uh, there's a lot of literature out there and uh, micro learning uh, has been proven to improve learning uh, retention by at least 50%. Okay, compared to other e-learning uh, modes. Okay, moving along uh, in terms of learner engagement. Okay, um, the Nobi platform is designed for learner engagement. So the way programs are created in Nobi is through this uh, thing called add actions. And with every action, uh, every time you add an action, you've got 12 options. Okay, whether it's about reading a passage, watching a video, doing a poll, uh, or a word uh, puzzle or quiz. So uh, by that format also reminds our curators to keep the content succinct and to keep the learner engaged as they uh, design the various programs we run each day. Okay, uh, last but not least, uh, we have ease of scalability. So the Nobi program is really very intuitive and user-friendly. So when we implemented Nobi, we did not have to spend a lot of time uh, teaching our staff how to navigate the Nobi app. Okay, so as a result of that, we were able to spend a lot of our energy around the change management, which was so important for an organization-wide deployment like uh, what we did. Okay, so uh, like I shared earlier, we launched Nobi in uh, July 2019, and six months later, uh, we all know what happened. Okay, COVID struck, and uh, we had to very quickly pivot Okay, from a predominantly face-to-face -face type uh, training uh, environment to a virtual training environment. So thankfully, uh, Nobi was already in place and uh, so we were able to pivot very quickly. So what we did was we coupled our Nobi programs with our virtual uh, training sessions. Okay, so uh, what we then, uh, the focus of the Nobi programs was to impart the knowledge. Okay, we used it for knowledge acquisition and for the facilitated virtual sessions, our facilitators were able to spend their time and energy around the application of the knowledge and skills. So this has worked out quite well for us. Uh, although Nobi, uh, or rather, although COVID is uh, water under the bridge right now, uh, there are three main takeaways uh, uh, we have uh, taken from the episode, so to speak. Uh, first, and I'll be a bit provocative here, 
there is no value for a trainer to be standing in front of a classroom downloading knowledge. Okay, that can be done more effectively uh, using the Novi platform. Uh, so the value add of a trainer in front of a classroom or facilitator in front of a classroom is to focus on the application of knowledge and skills. And that's how we can ensure uh, that our learners are able to implement what they have learned uh, in the real world. Okay, last but not least, uh, Andrew mentioned this a bit earlier around just-in-time learning. And uh, what we also realize is micro-learning is perfect for just-in-time learning. And which is really, if you think about uh, how adults learn, adults are motivated by needs. So they learn because uh, they, they, they've identified uh, there is something which they need to uh, uh, pick up. And uh, that intrinsic motivation uh, makes all that difference. So micro-learning makes the acquisition of such knowledge are uh, much easier. Okay, uh, would you like to make a guess? So uh, over the last uh, five years, okay, uh, we've implemented Nobi. We've created uh, a number of... Oh, sorry, Daniel, um, we can't hear you. Can everyone else hear Daniel? Sorry, is it better now? Oh, yes. Ah, okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, like I said, uh, we, uh, I have not covered this. Uh, so just pick a number which uh, uh, you fancy. I will not be offended if you pick the wrong number. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. So... Uh, Okay, the correct answer is 150. Okay, we hope to reach 250 uh, in the near future. Okay, so uh, what was the reason for our success with the implementation of Nobi? Okay, uh, apart from the strong partnership with Nobi, uh, there are two other uh, reasons. One is around citizen curators, and the other is about our mandatory programs. So let me just elaborate on uh, the citizen curators. So for departments or areas which create uh, content regularly, uh, we have evolved a cadre of uh, citizen curators. So, what do, so these are citizen curators are subject matter experts. And uh, what we do is we uh, give them or in, in, equip them with the principles of micro learning design. And we also show them and uh, teach them around uh, about how to go about creating programs on Nobi. Okay, however, the citizen curators do not create the programs directly in Nobi. The citizen curators uh, actually will write storyboards of the programs they would like to curate, and they will hand that over to an expert curation team who are eminently qualified in uh, micro learning design and curation on the Nobi platform. So we found that this formula works out uh, best for us, uh, partly because the citizen curators are. Uh, uh, they have substantive roles. So in the course of their work, uh, we use them to create these uh, storyboards, hand it over so that the, the curation team is able to do the curation very quickly. And there, we found that uh, the benefit of training the citizen curators on micro-learning design and curating on Novi has two advantages. Uh, the first being that because they are familiar with curation on the Novi platform, they can write better storyboards. Okay, and uh, that uh, shortens the cura overall curation time for us to bring a program uh, to our staff members. Okay, the second, uh, of course, is that from time to time, uh, we will need to do some updates uh, on the Novi programs. And because the citizen curators are able to curate on Novi, they are able to make those edits very quickly on their own without having to wait for the curation team. So overall, uh, this uh, format has worked out uh, very well for us. Uh, okay, moving on, uh, the other reason for the, our success, I believe, is around our mandatory programs. So uh, every year, uh, okay, oh, sorry, when I say mandatory programs, in some of your organizations, uh, you may call it uh, compliance programs. Okay, so every year, uh, staff in NFC have to complete four compliance programs. And typically, uh, it may take them, uh, probably, if I average it out, about two hours every year. So it's two hours of investment uh, for these programs. And I'm happy to share that um, 
the completion rate on our mandatory program is very close to 100%. So uh, we are uh, very pleased with that. Okay, so uh, on the topic of mandatory programs, I have a quick poll for everyone. Okay, uh, okay so I, I need to set, help you. Uh, let's set some context to this. Let's assume that you have to, to carry out mandatory programs or compliance programs in your organization. Uh, which format would you prefer? Let's assume that you've done this a couple of times. Okay, and you're somewhat familiar. Would you rather do the assessment upfront? Okay, or do you want to go through the entire program and then, and then do the assessments at the end? Okay, so uh, yeah, feel free to pick. There's no right, right or wrong answer. Uh, just pick what you can see. Okay, thank you. Okay, so far, uh, based on the, the folks who have uh, voted, about 70%, okay, thereabouts, uh, feel that they would like to do the assessment upfront and when they get over, uh, they're already completed, there's no need to run the full program. Okay, so uh, the reason why uh, I like to, I'm doing this poll is because traditionally uh, we have required all our staff to, care, to complete the program before they do the assessments. And uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one here. We've received feedback, okay, from a number of our staff uh, who, you know, they dread, they really dread uh, going through the compliance programs, but it is a requirement. Okay, so we're going to experiment with something different next year. Okay, in 2025, we hope to put the assessment up front. So those, the folks who are confident enough to try the assessment, uh, if they complete the assessment successfully, uh, there's no need for them to run through the entire program. So uh, if you're interested in finding out how uh, this is turning out for us, uh, let us know. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, I will now move into um, some of the learning trends, okay, uh, which are technologies which we have implemented uh, to improve the learning experience for our staff. So if I could uh, ask you to uh, go to item 12, okay, and uh, on this page, if you could just indicate uh, one of the technologies or trends which you have recently implemented in your organization or are interested to look into, uh, please indicate that on this page. Okay, thanks. Okay, there's a uh, hybrid learning generative AI seem to be uh, very close. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, thanks. So, uh, okay, thank you. Okay, in the interest of time, uh, I will just move on. So it's quite balanced, okay? Generative AI and hybrid learning. So in the next uh, segment, I will touch a little bit around what uh, we have done, okay, uh, on four in four areas. One is uh, augmented reality, okay. Second, on generative AI. The third is around video chaptering, and finally, uh, hybrid learning. So uh, I'll certainly cover these two uh, popular areas uh, which you have indicated. Okay, so augmented reality. So this is uh, something uh, we identified about two years ago as. Uh, a new muscle we wanted to develop in our organization. So within the learning team, we have uh, we wanted to build this new capability. So we've been watching this space, looking at the various apps out there. Uh, we dabbled in some of this uh, development. Uh, and initially in the earlier years, uh, most of the AR experiences required the end users to download an app before they could experience uh, the AR. And this did not augur very well for the end user experience. So it, it created a little bit of an overhead and uh, so-called clumsiness. Uh, however, of late, uh, we've noticed that there are a lot more web, a web enabled AR uh, apps out there, meaning you do not have to download an app to experience the AR. You are able to experience it through any uh, mobile browser. So what we did uh, recently, okay, uh, at the earlier part of this year was we injected a little, a little AR uh, adventure into our new hire program. Okay, uh, so essentially in our new hire program, one of the important things which we oriented our new employees is where to look for important information to help them settle down. So this could be things around the employee handbook, 
what is our performance appraisal cycle about, uh, et cetera. Uh, so what we did was we used a AR app to design a quiz, okay? And we put it on the Novi platform. So the staff had to answer 10 questions, okay? So it was a little bit of an escape room, escape room inspired uh, adventure, if you want to call it that. Uh, so the all the information is available on our staff portal and they will have to look for the, in, the answers and uh, answer that quiz on the Novi platform. So the feedback has been very successful. Okay, uh, the folks uh, really enjoyed uh, this way of learning rather than uh, show and tell. Okay, and uh, the training satisfaction scores on our and, uh, orientation programs, right, or induction programs uh, has consistently been around 93 to 95%. So uh, we are quite pleased with that. Okay, next uh, I will uh, move into uh, to share some of the things we have done uh, in the AL, AI RAM. Uh, so if I could uh, ask you, you know, if you have uh, either implemented something or you plan to look at something in your organization, uh, please feel free to uh, share it in this box and do share it with the group in the interest of uh, learning together. Okay, I'm sure we are not the only organization out there. So, uh, do uh, share that with us. Okay, AI to generate first draft. Okay, specific learning journey events. Okay, generate that. Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay, yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, I will move on to share what we have done. So in the area of uh, use, use of uh, AI and generative AI, uh, one of the things we found very useful is to use Gen AI to help us draft a storyboard. Okay, and I just want to emphasize this. Andrew mentioned this earlier. Remember to verify uh, the, the information because AI, uh, chat GPT, for example, or any generative AI tool has this net of uh, sounding very convincing. So remember to verify, refine, and most importantly, to contextualize this for, uh, for your learners. So this has been a tremendous uh, time saver because it's always easier to edit off a draft than to create something from scratch. Okay, the other thing which uh, we have uh, dabbled in is to use uh, an AI tool to create a manga inspired video. Okay, so I will share a sample of this video uh, a, uh, a little later, but allow me to just finish off this uh, AI trends. Okay, uh, next is of course, uh, how do we analyze uh, qualitative feedback? So uh, in the past, uh, the quantitative, quantitative feedback is very simple. Okay, any Google sheet or Excel spreadsheet uh, can uh, sort that out. The qualitative feedback is where the nuggets of information is. And typically in the past, uh, we had a staff member actually go through the feedback one at a time, uh, categorize it into logical headings and do a summary so that it is meaningful for us. So with uh, AI tools out there, you can just upload the qualitative feedback and uh, you instantly will get themes and summaries, which uh, you are able to use very, very quickly. Okay, so now I'm going to share a little video we created. Uh, this is a, a manga inspired video. Uh, allow me to set the context. So the context is uh, we created a program for our staff along around the, the topic learning agility. So uh, some of the things, uh, what do they need to do to become more agile? Okay, so we created this video to support uh, that particular program.
Okay, so in the interest of time, uh, I will not uh, uh, go through the entire uh, video. Uh, feel free, there's a link in the Nobi uh, app we created. So uh, feel free to run through that uh, at your convenience. Okay, next uh, is around video chaptering. So uh, we use this to augment our face-to-face -face and online workshops. So essentially, uh, from time to time, after staff attend a workshop, there may be topics from within the workshop which they want to review. Either they didn't get it the first time around or they may have missed out uh, on something. So essentially what we do is we record the session uh, and we use an AI tool which put, uh, provide a summary, do the transcripts, and also create a draft uh, uh, chaptering. Okay, so that uh, if the staff would like to go through a certain segment of a two-hour uh, recording, they don't have to scrub through the entire video. They know exactly where to uh, access that information. So this is actually very similar to what uh, YouTube uses in their chaptering feature. Okay, so uh, that's uh, video chaptering. Uh, the other piece uh, is around the, uh, th the, the fi final technology I want to share is around hybrid learning. So just to be uh, clear, hybrid learning uh, re re refers to the simultaneous delivery of training to both a physical and an online audience. Okay, so through uh, skillful facilitation as well as uh, the various collaborative and education technology tools out there, uh, it is quite, it is not difficult, okay, for the facilitator to engage both the physical audience and the online audience at the same time. Okay, in a lot of these uh, hybrid learning sessions, uh, the feedback uh, I've read in various articles is that uh, the online audience tends to feel left out. Okay, so what do we need to enable this uh, hybrid learning? Uh, essentially, there are two pieces to this. The first is around the equipment. Okay, uh, there is specialized equipment needed. Um, essentially, a pan tilt zoom camera, an LED uh, monitor, projectors, uh, microphones, speakers, etc. And uh, in case you are interested to explore this, uh, I would recommend you consider uh, attending. There's an EduTech conference coming up in November. There are vendors out there who are able to customize a solution based on your needs and budget. The cost has come down quite significantly over the last uh, few years. So that's something which uh, could be worth uh, exploring. Okay, um, so essentially uh, with hybrid learning, uh, the, so what I, I shared earlier was the one magic, of course, is the equipment. The second magic is around the facilitator skills. Okay, and uh, it, this, uh, the pro this process actually enables our facilitators to broaden their facilitation style. So our facilitators are quite adept at an online, uh, uh, engaging an online audience or a face-to-face -face audience. But when you bring the two uh, together, the dynamics is different and uh, another set of skills are required. Okay, so uh, some benefits uh, of this, of course, is that uh, in providing a hybrid learning approach, uh, we are able to provide flexibility for the learners to choose whether they would like to attend uh, the session virtually or in person, depending on the, their circumstances. Uh, secondly, like I shared earlier, the facilitators have an opportunity to broaden their facilitation style, okay? And last but not least, okay, there is also improved productivity for the organization because with one single session, a lot more participants are able to be part of that. So uh, we have found that with this something we piloted in 2024, we're quite excited with the feedback and uh, we're going to do more of this. Okay, so in uh, conclusion, I'd just like to share a little bit about how the team in uh, NTUC First Campus uh, delivers values to our learners. Okay, first is around continuous learning. So just as we uh, encourage our participants to embrace continuous learning, we need to set the example as the learning uh, department. And it, in, from a technology standpoint, uh, it is not possible to to learn or find out about every single technology out there. So we take a needs-based approach. So we have uh, two work groups running. The first work group is uh, comprises uh, a, set, uh, a group with our facilitators who do adult training. That means they train our uh, preschool educators. 
The second work group we have is with a group of preschool educators who are very keen to bring relevant technology into the classroom with the children. Okay, I want to state up front that uh, as we bring technology into the classrooms with young children, we are mindful of the screen time and at all times the uh, educator is supervising the children. So children are never left uh, on their own with uh, technology. Okay, so uh, uh, that, that's uh, how we do it. So for, with these two work groups, what we do is we find out their needs and pain points. And based on that, we will then look for relevant technology solutions. Uh, we adopt a, an agile approach, meaning we implement something quickly. We, the concept is fail fast and learn fast. Okay, and then we, after implementing it with the work group members, we then tweak it for wider uh, implementation. Okay, next is around Agile. I think Agile is pretty a very, a very much a buzzword these days. So while Agile has the benefit of being customer-centric, being very quick and flexible, uh, it can also become unpredictable at times because the constant state of continuous improvement sometimes uh, results in people not knowing is this the end point? Okay, and uh, my philosophy with implementing of technology is we need to be mindful that there are different users out there. There are those, those educators who are very familiar with technology and welcome changes all the time. There are also educators out there who are a little bit slower with the technology, but uh, having said that, when they get it, they get it. Okay, so we, we need to be very careful how we implement this. So whenever we implement any technology solutions, we always look at the scalability of the solution. And for us, scalability is a function of the cost, the ease of use, and the operational sustainability. So if we start with the end in mind, uh, there won't be surprises uh, down the road. Okay, last but not least uh, is about uh, the learner-centric approach. And we love to, to get feedback from our learners, but equally important is the feedback from their supervisors because that allows us to triangulate the needs of the learner with the needs of the organization so that we can identify any potential gaps and uh, make sure that that is addressed. Uh, the earlier point I made about uh, mandatory programs is also related to this learner-centric approach. Okay, so we the one reason why we are changing or thinking about changing the approach with our compliance programs is because of feedback from some of our learners who dread our compliance programs, and I'm sure they are not the exception. Okay, um, so yeah, so it, uh, that brings me to the end of my uh, sharing. And uh, if you could indulge me by sharing uh, one reflection based on something you've heard, uh, please uh, uh, show uh, in, uh, type it out here and share it with the group. Okay, and as you are doing that, uh, I would like to end off by sharing this quote. Uh, from one of the computer science professors at Stanford University. And it reads, AI won't replace humans, but humans who use AI will replace those who don't. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, I'm typing my reflection. So, oh, okay, <laughs> no, no, I was. I'm so. Uh, I think it's so interesting what you're sharing. And <laughs> excuse me. And we definitely. I know there's lots of questions that people have because, you know, it's it's so interesting. Even the evolution of how you're thinking about multiple AI storytelling mm -hmm. video. I love the manga, so I'm I'm definitely gonna watch the manga video after this because I think it's just very fun. So I'm curious, like when you're doing this, what does it take to train your team to have this mindset? Because okay, it's almost I, a dream to have citizen curators, right? But then this is, so how did you guys do that? Okay, I think uh, uh, we are very blessed, okay? We have a very motivated learning team. And uh, just to share a little bit, okay? Uh, some of them have even dabbled into a little bit of development. Okay, mm. so uh, I, I didn't share this in the uh, presentation earlier, but uh, to support some of the uh, the teachers with, uh, bringing technology into the classroom with our children. Uh, our Some of our training folks have actually developed uh, a game. Okay, uh, so today uh, the wonderful thing is there are many tools out there which enable non-programmers, non-developers to create apps. Okay, learning apps, activities and stuff like that. 
And uh, I think what we need, I think uh, I'm very, very grateful to my team. Uh, we have a group of folks who believe that uh, anything is possible. Okay. okay, so it's just, you know, go out there and try it. Sometimes it doesn't work. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. even when it doesn't work, you learn how not to do things. So there's mm -hmm. always some, some learning from uh, whatever we do. Yeah. And, and but was it was was there like a systematic training or was it more just open up? Because I, you know, I know many companies and schools, they say, oh, we have these tools, try anything you want, experiment. But oh, then, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the way we go about it, so I shared earlier, we have the work groups and when we uh, get the feedback from the work groups, we go out there to look for solutions. Now, we are relatively new into this ad tech space as well. I think this team, to, to be fair, I think this team is, maybe two and a half years old. So it's a very uh, young team in terms of the ad tech space. However, mm -hmm. I think we are blessed with having some uh, very kind advisors. So we have some contacts out there, uh, people in the education technology uh, real, it, it field. And uh, when we are stuck, uh, we kind of, you know, uh, email them or, you know, go and have coffee with some of them to go and get some ideas. And I think really that's what this building this community is all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's through the networking and uh, nobody has a, has a monopoly on, a, you know, the ideal solution for everybody's needs. We just got to figure it out and it's going to be different for every organization. Yeah, I think I think the mindset, right, I think is so important of how do you do that. And we have a great question even from the, from the panel. So please do, folks, add your questions to the group board and we'll definitely answer them. Um, one question um, is, to implement, you know, Novi to 5,000 employees is not easy, right? And to use manga and other tools. So how did you do that? Did you have to get copyrights, use AI? And how do you deal with copyright and IP protection? Ah, okay. So uh, essentially, uh, th that's the beauty of creating your own content. You don't have to worry about copyrights. Uh, so essentially, uh, in, the, in our learning team, uh, when we set up uh, the learning team about five years ago, uh, one of the things we were quite clear about is we needed the ability to create content. Okay, so uh, in, in the initial days, so we uh, brought in our team members who were very good at sh uh, shooting videos, okay, doing video editing and so on and so forth. And along the way, as we brought, uh, brought Novi into, the, into the, our ecosystem, I think our folks were inspired by, you know, uh, since we have this wonderful platform, how do we make the content even more engaging? So, uh, there is, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, if you take content from out there, there's always an issue around copyrights and what have you. But if you create your own content, uh, mm. then that problem kind of goes away. And today, it is not that difficult to uh, create uh, content. Yeah, it's true. And I think but that's a very, that's kind of a different shift as well, right? Because you can curate different pieces of content because in some ways you're curating the tools that you need in order to design and deliver content in a very interesting way. Yes, yes. Right, yes. so it's a different almost like challenge. And so it's like a mindset shift, mm. right? Yes. Of how can I quickly and easily create content? Yeah, we need yes. to do it in a, as cheap a way as possible because, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with 180, okay, so with 5,000 staff out there, more than 180 preschools, if I had to pay licenses for a software, okay, uh, which is not being used extensively, it's going to be a very expensive exercise. So we need to yeah. wrap our heads around that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And another one is, um, <clears throat> Eileen has a good, quick question. Sounds like micro learning for knowledge transfer is great. Um, and you talked about face-to-face -face for application. Um, any ways, other ways to hone skills and knowledge application using tech? Because I actually know you guys use tech to do application, not just knowledge transfer, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. can you share some examples of that? Oh, okay. Uh, there is an area which uh, we have some interest in, but we have not gone in a big way. Uh, not too long ago, I saw a demo okay, by an organization. So what they did was, there was this customer service program which you will go through. And after you completed the program, you will do a role play with an avatar. Okay, and, the, and this avatar, so they programmed it. It's quite a clever design. So what they've done is, uh, depending, it's not just about the words you say, it's about your body language, your tone of voice, and depending on how you respond to the avatar, the avatar would either uh, escalate the issue or resolve the issue. Okay, so I think uh, in terms of the future, I think uh, there's a lot of opportunities for things like that. Okay, because yeah. uh, one of the limitations of a micro learning platform is, yeah, you can say role plays, how do you do a meaningful role play in a safe environment? Mm. 
Okay, so I think that could be the next uh, big thing. Yeah, interesting. And maybe just to add to that, I mean, one of the things that we do is we do role plays within Obi where you ask them to upload a video. Ah. So the action you give them is you give them the scenario and you have mm. them upload a video of themselves ah. responding to that. And mm. then, what the of course, this admins can see the answers and get feedback. Yep. So mm. that's real time. Mm. Or we have people who do like technical training. And mm. what they do is they give them the activity to do the technical thing, mm. then say, record yourself yep. or, up, or take a picture of what you've done. Mm. Mm. So they prove they finished the action and then they upload it. So there's definitely very, it depends on whether soft skills are technical, but we've seen both examples, which has been very, very interesting. Mm. Um, operational question, which I thought I have, Amy's question, how big is your team and do you break them up by roles? What are the roles and how do you structure the team for success? Okay, so my team is 11 people, including me. Okay, so, uh, and uh, the we kind of uh, divide the world into two, two groups. Okay, so I've got a group which looks after all the tech. Okay, all the education technology. So what it means is no curating programs on Nobi, uh, looking for solutions to meet the facilitators as well as uh, the educators' needs. So the team of five uh, look at that. But uh, having said that, they don't just look at tech alone. They also get involved in training. So like new hire programs, uh, various technical uh, courses, how to do video editing. Okay, how to take better photographs, you know, uh, so that when you send photographs to parents, uh, you have meaningful, pho good photographs to show to parents and not just headshots, you know, with uh, the parents not knowing what's going on. So uh, so broadly, there's a, a tech group. Now, I've got another group, uh, which is also five people. So five people in each group. The other group looks after what I call program management. Okay, mm -hmm. so in the program management group, this is where there's a lot of BAU. Okay, so essentially, uh, they, they do the plannings for the year. Uh, they are the ones who also uh, generate the analytics needed. So for example, when we assign core programs to our staff, uh, not everybody is so compliant and will attend the program. So sometimes when they, they do not attend the required programs, uh, we will draw reports and give it to the supervisors, the ROs, so that uh, they are able to you know, uh, encourage their staff to sign up. So very broadly, there's a program management team and very broadly, I call it a tech, technology team. I love it. I love it. And I guess, you know, I think just in terms of ratios, right? you have 11 people, you have 15, you know, 5,000 staff, right? So yes. it also just helps people to start to thinking about um, having like dedicated teams, but it's also dedicated. What we've seen is dedicated teams are very important mm. in order for it to really be, to change the culture as well. Yes. And also right. to enable it in the, in the organization. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so maybe just add on, uh, one yeah. of the things we did uh, it, you know, since uh, we launched Nobi is, we look at Nobi as a productivity enabler. So, okay, so when, I, when we create a program and put it on the Nobi platform and it's made available to 5,000 staff, it is a great productivity tool. So what we do uh, on a month, what I do on a month-to-month -month basis is I actually measure the productivity of the learning team, okay, based on training transactions. So I use a ratio, a very simple ratio, training transactions per staff member. Okay, so over the years, we're able to see, you know, are we heading in the right direction or are we uh, not adding value and costing the organization a lot of money? <laughs> training? What is it? The measure training? It's training transactions okay. divided by uh, headcount. Okay. The learning department's headcount. And what, and what is the training transaction? Okay, so training transactions are, uh, is, okay, uh, includes uh, all programs, uh, mobile programs attended. So all Mobi programs completed. Mm -hmm. Okay, it includes uh, uh, all the transactions which the team, uh, okay, so we get into training administrative stuff. We send people, uh, our folks for, you know, first aid causes, customer service causes, marketing causes. So everyone is a transaction. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I very loosely, I classify this as transaction divided by my full-time equivalent headcount. I love it. Okay, <laughs> I think they're going to get a lot of questions on this. And um, very practical. I know we're going to take a break soon, but uh, Mark has a great question. So which website or AI software would you suggest for making the storyboards that works with Nobi? Okay, um, there are a few out there. So for storyboards, uh, we generally use ChatGPT. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, uh, most other platforms will be able to do uh, similar stuff. Okay. Do you, do you pay for it or is it uh, free? We have a paid subscription. We have one paid subscription. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Excellent. I mean, there are so Daniel is honestly so inspiring I and mean, he's such a great facilitator that I'm like, I'm trying to help facilitate, but I want to answer his question. <laughs> so I, I have to do that in this break. So we're going to give everyone a 15 minute break because it's lunchtime and give everyone a chance to grab your coffee, bio break. But also, most importantly, we really want you to reflect and also give Daniel feedback um, on this session and share your learnings because we want to learn from you. Um, I may have missed some points and we may have missed some points. So we want to give everyone a chance to do that. So please go to session three, take this next 15 minute break to just share what are your reflections um, here. Share that with the two. I'm still drafting mine. I'll finish mine during this 15 minute break. And then um, what we'd love to hear from you as well. And then share that feedback with the group. And then we're going to come, be coming up in 15 minutes. We're going to have Dr. Andrew Ma talk about AI. It's going to be fun. He's, and I, I just love Daniel's session because he showed examples and really, really practical show and tell. Uh, Andrew is also going to do show and tell with the different AI tools. So keep your AI questions and your tech questions. Um, and we're going to continue this dialogue in about 15 minutes. So thank you so much. Please join me in appreciating Daniel for such a high energy, like exciting session. So thank you so much, Daniel. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Okay. All right. See you guys in 15 minutes. <laughs>